Ahoy there fellow pirates. What's this? Everyone's arguing about Sea of Thieves being in a terrible state and dying. Well, I'm above such arguments. You see, being the based individual I am, I simply blame the government. Personally, I think we should just bring the game into public ownership. A Sea of Thieves for the people, not for profit, you know? Hashtag nationalise Sea of Thieves. Alright, yes, I'm about to hit you all with a hard truth now that these cannons are awesome. Most of the competitive Sea of Thieves players believe that the default cannon model is the best one. Unfortunately, I beg to differ. You see, these cannons are simply superior, and I'll explain why soon, but firstly, obtaining them. You can acquire them in a range of colours in a few different ways. The easiest way, however, is to buy the aristocrat cannons for 50 doubloons. The best looking variant, of course, is the one that's now impossible to obtain, and that's the mercenary design. If you have these, can I have a go, please? I myself use the Silver Blade Cannons mostly, which require you to play the game's inside a build for an hour every week for 30 weeks. There are other versions, but I want to get onto the real meat of the video now. People can use whatever cannons they want. I think your cannons say a lot about your personality and skill. Sensible and efficient. Reliable but showy. Proud with respect for symmetry. Empty-headed and insane. Or, in my case, pure logic with a terrifying level of genius. I may be coming off as a narcissist here, but let me assure you, I am one. The reason the default cannon is so widely used is partially because it's so easily accessible, but it also covers very little of your screen, giving a clear view of what's in front of you, allowing you to see any incoming cannonballs on their way to blow your head off. They're also symmetrical, which is basically a minimum requirement for any good cannon. However, these cannons lack one thing that I think is extremely important. Can anyone guess what that is? I'll give you four seconds to think so I can fill out the video a bit. <coughs> if you said they're not interesting, you're right, but it's not what I was thinking of. What I was thinking of is that they lack points of reference. It's just round and doesn't cover much of the screen, leaving you guessing where to shoot. But what these cannons that I like do is they give you points that you can measure to shoot more accurately and consistently. Allow me to elaborate. The six jewels located around the edge of the cannon's brim are my primary reference points, though only five are visible. Together, I can use these jewels to form three lines, and I can use these lines as a kind of range-finding reticle in a sniper scope. Admittedly, they do have the slight disadvantage that the scope is opaque, but that's probably fine. You can usually know whereabouts an enemy ship is, either by lowering the cannon between each shot to see where your shots are landing, or by being able to see any part of the enemy ship. Hopefully, you can see in this clip how I'm lining the gems up with certain parts of an enemy ship in order to hit my shots. Yeah, I know I'm not hitting every shot, but at a long range, I feel like there is an element of look to it. In completely calm waters, you can hit your shots like a machine with these cannons. As the range closes, however, you can see that it gets a lot easier to measure your shots. Granted, the target is covering much more of your screen. I think it's fair to say that these cannons were almost too amazing for their own good, because at one point, my helmsman decided he wanted a piece of the obsidian cannon action. Hey, get off that. You. Leaving us with an unarranged roll swap and a victory. You see, even someone inexperienced with these cannons can quickly adjust to their magnificence. These cannons reference points are useful at any range too. I think they can make it easier to one ball people and then one ball them again. They're excellent for consistency, allowing you to hit the same spot over and over. If you've ever been in a battle against a good cannoneer, you'll know there's nothing more annoying than barely being able to get any shots off because you're constantly being knocked away from the cannon. Okay, look, what I've been describing is honestly possible with any cannon. Every cannon has points of reference, and if you're experienced with a cannon, you can just naturally hit your shots like a machine by watching where your cannonballs go and adjusting accordingly. I just happen to be very proficient with these cannons in particular. I don't really think that these ones are unequivocally the best choice for every player. More so, my point is that every cosmetic has its purpose except these ones, and there's nothing wrong with using what you're good with. If you really hate the amount of screen space this cannon design takes up, that's totally fair, but they still deserve some love for the variety they add, because sometimes a complete muppet of a player like me comes along and decides that they find the design really useful. 
With enough practice, you can be proficient with any cannons. Whether it be a cannon rowboat, which is incredibly underrated in my opinion, or the more unusual shapes. So let me know if I've convinced you, or if you disagree with the points that I've made about this topic, which, in the grand scheme of things, doesn't matter at all. Thankfully, I'm sure there'll be absolutely no discourse in the comments, thanks to my completely unbiased and wholly respectful style of script writing. Follow me on Twitter at LongingString for tweets that are rarely relevant to this game, and safe voyages everyone.